All right, we're talking with Navy veteran Stephanie Dasher, who's the executive director of Warrior Surf Foundation. Stephanie, uh, thanks for being here today. Looking forward to hearing your story. Why don't you take us back and tell us what you did in the Navy? Yeah, so I joined the Navy right out of high school, essentially. I wanted to, I knew I wanted to go to college. Um, that was important to me. And I was kind of like ready and and ready to go and my parents were taking a little bit too long filling out the FAFSA paperwork <laughs> um, and so I was like oh I'll just go take the ASVAB and um, I went down and took that and then I was like oh I'm gonna be a pilot uh, with all of the the arrogance and, and gusto that comes along with being 18 years old I knew nothing about flying and then, <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. and so I, I did a quick google search uh, this is back in 2004 uh, you know, did a, did a little bit of prelim preliminary studying, went in to MEPS, took the test and, um, I wanted to be in the army and I missed it by, I think just one point or two points or something like that. And the, the warrant officer that was there just was like, you think you can just come in here and, and be a pilot? And I was like, wow, this guy's a real jerk. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't want to hang out with these people. So I went home and, um, uh, the Navy recruiters contacted me. And they're like, hey, do you want to be a nuke? And I was like, ah, I don't know about that. And then they're like, well, we'll give you a lot of money. And so I was like, okay. And they're like, and you'll finish your school. And I was like, done, sign, sign me up. Uh, <laughs> so I signed on the dotted line for that. And I was a nuke ET in the Navy. Uh -huh. um, I met my husband also while I was in the Navy. Um, and we were stationed out West. He was out of Tacoma. At Fort Lewis and I was in Burberton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So on your in your transition out of the Navy, what was it like five years in the Navy? And then did that come as a surprise or were you preparing well prepared, getting out of the Navy? What was your transition like? I think our transition was kind of interesting. So my husband was 11 Bravo. Um mm -hmm. he'd come back from Iraq and it was, he'd been stop lost. So when he got back, <laughs> they just immediately released him. And with, with no interventions, no no check-in, psych check-in or, or anything yeah. like that. And uh, that happened to him and, and several of the guys that he was over there with. And so we got pregnant right after he got back, which was also a surprise. And, you know, at the time, not really, in, in my mind, ideal. Right. I've still got this person that's hitting the deck every time there's a loud noise mm -hmm. and a prone crawl to the back door uh, <laughs> just to check, check out what's happening. And so initially he was working for General Dynamics. And when our daughter was born, we decided um, he'd stay home with her for a little while. And then when my time came to, to get out, um, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I, I knew that I had uh, the ability to get to be hired um, mm -hmm. and interview for a couple places. And I think that for the benefit of doing what I did in the military, and uh, there's a lot of education that comes along with it and a lot of skills training. So it's a highly desirable job. Um, it's not typically difficult for people, I think, doing who've been nukes to, to find employment. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't want to work in that field. I knew that I didn't want to continue doing that. Um, and we wanted to be closer to family. So we moved back home to Ohio for what I call one winter. And um, we decided that my husband was going to go back to school and become a teacher. Mm -hmm. And so he went started going to school. I was also going to school. I wanted to finish my um when you when you're a nuke, you have the opportunity to, to kind of fast track a the engineering sciences and technology degree. So yeah. I wanted to finish that. Um and I was doing that while so we were essentially both uh going to school at the same time. And I don't think either one of us really knew what it was that we wanted to do. And so he worked for his dad as a painter for a while while he was going to school. I did all kinds of things. I started a photography and graphic design business. I did midwifery. Um, and I don't think 
really either one of our cups were very full. If that makes right. sense. We just sure. kind of felt lost in the sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty common. So yeah. ultimately, um, as, as time goes on, did you guys finish school and then um, get into some other employment opportunities before you ended up at uh, Warrior Surf Foundation? Yeah. So he finished school. He was a teacher. Um, he was doing really well, uh, I guess, in the employment aspect of it. But emotionally, it was really difficult for him. It brought up a lot of the things that he experienced in his deployment when he was overseas. Uh, in 07, 08. And it really started to kind of drag on his mental health. And so, you know, a lot of the stuff that had started out with the, the PTSD that he was having just became bigger and worse, more depression, more anxiety. And it really got to the point where I was afraid to leave him at home alone. Because I didn't know what I was going to come back to. And so often I would just leave a kid with him because I'm like, oh, if I leave some responsibility here, then maybe, you know, I can know what to expect when I get back. Yeah. And so that was a really big fear. And eventually we decided that we would switch. So I had been staying at home, only kind of working part time, taking care of the kids while he was teaching. And we decided that we were going to make a big shift. And simultaneously, he was trying to seek treatment uh, in a lot of different ways. And nothing mm -hmm. was really working. And his um, his psychologist at the VA mentioned Warrior Surf Foundation, which he told me about. And yeah. I was like, yes, this sounds cool. I don't care if it works. It just sounds exciting. Like, let's go check it out. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't want to at all. Um <laughs> And this is really the story of how I got to where I am today. I, I really drug him down there and I was like, we're going to, we're going to do this. Um, Are you guys still in Ohio at this point? No, we'd moved to South Carolina. We oh, lived okay. in Ohio for what I call one winter. I couldn't hack it. Uh, I was like, it's <laughs> way too cold here for me. Uh, this is not yep. my, not my ideal situation. Um, <laughs> so we had moved to South Carolina um, because I was here for nuke school and it was warmer and we just thought we'd try it out. So um, I drug him down there and, and he predictably hated it. He didn't want to be around any of the other veterans. Uh, he was oh. like, oh, they're vetting me. I don't like this. Uh, uh, you know, just really having a hard time, like connecting with anyone. And yeah. I think that's true of a lot of veterans, right? Like sure. you you get into these, these spaces after the military and you lose your sense of purpose and, and then you kind of begin to self-isolate. So connecting with other people can okay. feel really hard, but I could see that it was working. I could see that there was something inside of him that was being engaged. Uh, I think I had served a very small amount when I was in high school, mm -hmm. uh, just a few times and so I was initially a little bit better at it than he was and he's very athletic and so I think that was a push too and he's like wait a second how is she doing this and so um that really drove him to kept to keep going and I was watching him kind of begin to unfold in this space huh. and so I reached out to the guy who founded it Andy Manzi who's a marine veteran I was like hey I'm a nerd you guys have papers near water like let me help you yeah. um, I just started volunteering oh okay and, that's cool and that really opened up something in both of us I think um I think a lot of service members feel that way just a desire to help to serve and so I think for both of us we realized like wow this is this feels right this feels really good and we feel at home here in this space doing this kind of work um, they couldn't get really get rid of me. That's <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right, I'll hold that thought. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, we're back talking with Navy veteran Stephanie Dasher, who's the executive director of Warrior Foundation. So, Stephanie, I know a lot of folks. I, I almost started a nonprofit myself many years ago, uh, but I decided to go the podcast route. I got a lot of friends that have started and are still running nonprofits. And um, 
one thing they all have in common is they all need somebody like Steffi to, to, to show up and say, hey, let me show up and do your books and your back office and all that other stuff that, that, that they don't want to do. So um, you just kind of, that's great how you showed up and said, hey, I want to get involved and I, I'm part of the solution. Uh, so let me help. So talk about what your role has evolved into uh, since you got started with Warrior Surf Foundation. Yeah, so when I originally started, I think a lot of people who started a nonprofit kind of understand this. Tons of people will show up with good intentions, and then the the beach is littered with the bones of of people with good intentions. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, <it's not> true. <laughs> Once the work <laughs> begins, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, at first, I think there was, you know, Andy was kind of like, oh, I wonder if this person's going to do what they say they're going to do. So he he was like, oh, we have all these online thank you messages we have to send out. There's like a thousand of them. So I got on there and I was like, done, I'm doing this. So I went through and I did typed a bunch of thank you messages on this platform. And then um, I was listening to kind of the vision and I was like, wow, I can, I can see how this is going to grow and how this can benefit people. So I just mm -hmm. started doing other things. I'm like, okay, let me help digitize this event. And I think the first really big thing I did was digitize. We do a surfboard raffle every year and an auction. And I, I digitized it and I was like, let's put this on Facebook and, and put this out to the world and people can buy raffle tickets online. They don't even have to be present. Wow. And so that that was probably the moment where I think Andy was like, oh, maybe we should we should uh keep this person around. And so <laughs> he I had a, a part-time job. I was um running my own business at the time, doing graphic design photography and then also doing midwifery on the side. Mm -hmm. He was like, hey, how do how would you think about, you know, coming to work for the foundation? And I was just so in love with the mission and the vision and how it impacted my family. I was like, yes, sign me up. And it was still at that time, just popsicle sticks and duct tape on the back end. And so really we grew it from the ground up uh, and have just kept pressing in. And when Andy wanted to step down from take a break from the executive director role, he asked me if I would step in and take it over. And originally I was like, no, that is a lot of pressure. Uh, this is essentially putting people's lives in my hand. And I don't know that I want this. And yeah. also this is your baby. Uh, but eventually he convinced me that it was a good idea. And so here we are today. Now, is he still kind of the face of the organization? What's his role today? He really is like a board member of Meritas. He just ran the New York Marathon. Um, mm -hmm. We partnered with Semper Fi. He's, he's always around um and and comes in and out you know when he has the time and availability to do it but he will always be a big part of it yeah so so what does the uh executive director typically do on a daily weekly monthly basis well i think the most important thing that any executive director does is kind of just steer the ship uh -huh. so it's my job to support our staff in our mission and make sure that our staff has all the tools that they need to make sure that we're getting our veterans served and that they're getting the experiences that they need to be able to make changes in their lives. Mm -hmm. I'd say that's the big thing that I do. I mean, obviously I have to go out and fundraise and meet people and do development stuff, but I view my main job as just setting the course for the ship. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, one of the things I just, you know, intertwined with the whole nonprofit world that I discovered myself and a lot of people I know running nonprofits um, discover over time is you're all focused on this mission, like, for example, helping veterans and using surfing as, as that vehicle, but you're not, you quickly are not helping teaching guys how to surf. You suddenly realize your job is to fundraise because the organization needs money to operate all those back end expenses and everything. And some folks fill that role really well. Oh, I'm, I'm supposed to go out and fundraise. Yeah, I can do that. We'll have events and everything else. And then some folks don't take to it very well at all. So they need somebody, they need like a Stephanie uh, to come along to, to do a lot of that form or at least organize it. So you talk a little bit about um, what your guys' experience was when you got, you started taking the fundraising uh, game a little more serious. Yeah, it's, it's so challenging and it feels, I think when your heart is for the mission, sometimes it feels 
hard to want to go out and fundraise because you feel like you're selling a part of yourself. Yeah. And it's not a natural thing for a lot of veterans to do. Um, I've actually, sorry, just to interrupt. I've actually noticed sometimes that a non-veteran sometimes does better at that part because uh, I don't want to say they don't have that pride factor, but it they're like a lot of, you know, veterans have been kind of conditioned to not stick up above the crowd would be a team player no self-promotion, but a non-military type sometimes fills that role. Uh, I've noticed better than an actual veteran. So it's, it's hard to come around to that. So talk, uh, keep going. And I'm sure you experienced that yourself. I would say it's, it's really difficult. Uh, I think Andy really struggled with it. I think it's something I struggle with. Um, I'm really thankful for my development director because she, she's good at, uh, you know, queuing things up, teeing stuff up for me and then ma and making me go to them. Uh -huh. uh, and other things that I'm, I just wouldn't choose to do myself. I, I would rather not um, be in the limelight. I, I don't like it. Actually, I was like, ah, I don't even want to do a podcast. But <laughs> the flip side is, um, I know that if I put myself out there, I can. It's not about me. The, and the, I think the strength comes from realizing that maybe you're telling your story. A lot of times, maybe you're having to put yourself out there in a way you don't want to, but it's actually not about you. It's about the people that we're serving. And if I sacrifice this little bit of myself doing something I don't really want to do, like I'm creating opportunities for people to be able to get services that they might not otherwise. Yeah. So can you talk about, um, I, I guess your the, the main program now is your 12-week program. Talk mm -hmm. about what kind of impact that's had on some of the folks that have been through it. Yeah, it's it's a 12 week program. We have graduation requirements to be able to graduate from our program. So when you sign up, you are required to do, I mean, when I say required in quotations, um, you don't have to, but we, we yeah. hope you do. Uh, <laughs> semi private surf sessions, eight individual wellness coaching sessions, uh, yoga one on one, and then three group yoga sessions. And that's kind of the whole of our program, all of those pieces work together in synergy. Mm -hmm. And we have people that come from us, come to us from all walks of life. Their experiences run the gamut from being combat veterans to, you know, being a lot like what I did, which is, is push buttons and turn knobs. Um, and that's okay. Sometimes our, our, our experiences, our traumas come before the military. Sometimes they come during, sometimes they come after. And really what we're just asking people is to choose to show up for themselves. Um, we tell everybody on day one, you show up for yourself. Our staff's going to show up 110% for you. Mm -hmm. And the power in what we see is that trauma kind of, any trauma doesn't matter what it is often has the same kinds of results, right? So it knocks us off balance. It tends to skew our ability to see our sense of purpose and our value. And it takes us away from living within the realms of our authentic being. And so when you go through our program, when a veteran goes through our program, the wellness coaching sessions, the surfing they, and the yoga, they work in tandem to help them, first of all, identify areas of importance in their life. And then identify like, okay, how often am I acting in these areas? And how often do I need to act in them to feel important? And when you find that, you're able to come back to that center place, that place of authenticity, and you have direction. And when you have direction, you have purpose. So we have veterans who have tried a lot of different things. They're depressed. They have really bad anxiety. Um, and then they are going through our program and we're seeing these shifts, not only in their depression levels being reduced, but their ability to communicate with their families becomes in, enhanced. They're, they're maybe if they're underemployed or they don't like their employment, they're, they're able to make those kinds of shifts and changes to either go back to school to get different or better employment. So we're seeing a lot of benefits to the veterans who are coming through our program I have one veteran. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, I have one veteran in particular. I love to talk about when he came to us. Um, he had gone through vet treatment court, which is something we have here in South Carolina, where instead of going to jail for drug or alcohol related offenses, you can go through 
this 18 month program, which I think is really powerful. And when he came to us, he, you know, he was pretty shy, wasn't super connected to anyone, had really limited use of his right arm. Um, and about a year after he finished the program, we do a retreat to Guatemala. We brought him with us. So our program graduates can come for an intensive week long retreat and just seeing him paddle out to the outside under his own power, having stuck with it, uh, just watching him connect to other people. And now he runs our, we have our own little recovery group inside of Warrior Surf and he runs that. And I just am so amazed by him and his resilience and his ability to uh, rise to the occasion really to, to overcome everything that he's experienced and become a leader. Wow. That's awesome. Great story. So Stephanie, you, you were actually an entrepreneur uh, before you started working for Warrior Surf Foundation. And obviously even, you know, being the executive director of a nonprofit is very entrepreneurial venture. Can you talk a little bit about your experience with entrepreneurship and how you ended up in entrepreneurship after the Navy vice, uh, you know, working as working at the JOB? Yeah, I think part of my my drive for and desire to be an entrepreneur is I really like adventure. I think that's one piece of the puzzle. The other piece of the puzzle is my dad worked a lot. Both my parents worked a lot when I was a kid. They were never around. Um, and so I wanted to be able to live a life where I felt like I could also be around for my kids. And it is scary. That's that's true. Um, it's a little bit like I've never done it, but I imagine jumping out of a, a helicopter or an airplane, you know, there's a lot of trust involved. And to me, it, it's this ability to uh, make sure that you control all the pieces that you can control up front and then allow everything else to unfold, uh, mm -hmm. to trust that you've, you've laid the groundwork as best you can. You're not going to be perfect all the time. That's okay. Not letting this idea, I think we have this in the military of like everything has to be perfect 100%, like 80% is good enough because 80% is better than zero. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've always kind of been entrepreneurial minded, even as a little kid, um, in all the whole time I was in the Marine Corps. And then when I got out and I took, started taking entrepreneurship seriously, I discovered I really missed the military mindset. You know, you've heard that term before love the military mindset and that, that way of mentality, that the way of thinking. And I, I kind of came to this conclusion one day that you know, the entrepreneurial mindset is like almost as close to the military mindset as you can get. And I think that's one of the other things I love about entrepreneurship is I love the, the energy and the way entrepreneurs think, just like the, the military mindset. Yeah, I agree with you. I think there is definitely some similarities in there. And, and you know, it's like, here's the best laid plans, right? And then what do we do when those fall apart? Well, we, we, we draw on everything we've already learned and, and we just keep pressing through. You just make it happen. Yeah. And there's a piece of that to the puzzle. So if someone's looking to check out the Warrior Surf uh, Foundation programs, how do they find you? Yeah. So if they want to come check out our programs, it's really easy. They just go to warriorsurf.org and they can hit the application tab or the about us tab and read all about our programming. Awesome. And we still have a little bit of time left. So I, I do want to give you a couple last words on advice. If someone uh, getting out of the military and they're looking to get into entrepreneurship, what kind of advice comes to mind? Hmm, I think that's a great question. You're, you're going to be terrified. <laughs> it's going to feel yeah. scary. Yeah. Um, you're going to mess it up and True. it's going to be messy and that's okay. Mm -hmm. the that whole 80 I want to just go back to that 80 percent like a lot of us have a hard time with believing that our mistakes are going to get people killed and that's not necessarily true in this space and when you fail and you fall down like it's a learning curve right just you have to keep learning and press through and be okay with the mistakes that are inevitably going to come because on yeah. the other side of that is a lot of growth. Awesome. And one thing as far as the veteran nonprofits and you know, getting folks help, 
Um, you know, if if someone's listening to this and they're struggling a little bit, or maybe they know someone who's struggling, uh, what are some of the best ways to you know, get that veteran involved in a, in a program like Warrior Surf Foundation um, and, and some of the benefits that they'll get out of that? And how do you convince somebody that might be a little hesitant? You know, I, I've i lived this, right? So um, it's not always easy. And I think that anybody that is a caretaker, friend, spouse, um, family member of a veteran who's struggling, I see you, right? Because it's not always easy and, and they have to put up with a lot, right? And they have their own stuff. And often they're held to be the container for that person when they're really struggling. And I, I think that you just have to keep encouraging them, keep reminding them that they are valuable, that they don't have to do anything to have value, just that because they live and breathe and exist, that they're valuable, they're worthwhile, and they're wanted. Um, and I think that you just hold that space for them and you keep pressing in. And, you know, sometimes you got to draw a line in the sand and say, hey, we're going to go get in the water. Or we're going to go to this and I want to do it with you and mm -hmm. I'll be right here with you. That's awesome. All right, Stephanie, um, thanks for sharing your entrepreneurial success story and uh, some of the great things you guys are doing with Warrior Surf Foundation and look forward to seeing your, your guys' future success. Thank you so much for having me on. All right, you bet. These two veterans are asking Mike.